keep creating, keep finding out, I guess, what you like about design and find your, your niche. I'm still like trying to figure it out as well. But I think that also helps you develop that. Just keep creating different things and just broaden your spectrum on everything. Welcome to the Passion Behind the Art Show. It's all about diving in with individuals to learn the story behind their passion. It's your host, Daryl Pena. What's up? Guess what? It's another week, another amazing guest, and another opportunity for me to bring you value through someone else's story. But before we jump into this week's episode, I just want to let you know that our Patreon page is up and running, finally. And if you're not familiar with Patreon, it's basically a way to support a specific endeavor that you're interested in. And of course, the endeavor that we're talking about right now is Passion Behind the Art, the podcast. So I'd really appreciate it if you would support the podcast through our Patreon page. All you need to do is just go to passionbehindart.com and look for the Patreon tab and it will take you directly to the page. This would mean the world to me and everything that I'm doing in regards to the podcast. A large percentage of what I do in regards to the podcast, as a matter of fact, all of it is free. And I would really appreciate you if you could just help support the podcast with as low as $2. Nothing too crazy, $2. And of course, there's various tiers you can support with more. And the more you support, the more incentives you get. So just go to passionbandart.com and check out the, our Patreon page. This would help me out a lot. There will also be a link in the show notes. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. All right. I'm very excited to have Michael Barron on the Passion Behind the Art show. Um, graphic designer over there at the New York Jets. And I'm excited to have him on. Michael, welcome, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, Daryl. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to kind of have you on because um, a lot of my li- listeners know, like, I'm a sports geek and I'm a Jets fan. Uh, it's kind of depressing, but uh, <laughs> I got I got to write it out. <laughs> yep, we all do. We all do. <laughs> so, Michael, let's jump right into it. How did your creative journey start? Um, I would have to say it started pretty much at a very young age um just you know the usual like drawing coloring painting even building um just being kind of surrounded by that subconsciously i think that's how it really started and then mm-hmm. kind of like moving more from that um like in middle school high school just being taking those art classes and being inspired by like different teachers and just getting lost in more of the projects they throw at you um you're kind of just like working and you it's almost like you're daydreaming you know time goes by but you have no idea at all and then the bell rings and you gotta go (laughs) um i think that's what like more like i enjoy about being creative as well just getting lost in Mm. that and almost like having that um like serenity just being involved in that (laughs) but like moving on from being in high school, having to like think about, okay, now where am I going to go to college? You know, you're a junior in high school getting ready. And it's like, all right, you got to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of nerve wracking at first, but um, craft design was not something that oh, I yeah. originally had planned, you know? And I feel like that kind of starts out for a lot of designers as well. Um, I kind of wanted to more take up architecture mm. and to be honest, I did not like when I started looking more and more into it, I did not have the <laughs> grades at all to kind of pursue that in college or I would have to maybe like it would go to like a community college. I mean, there's mm. nothing wrong with that at all, but like kind of just be like an extra step in my process. Right. Um, but and then once I kind of noticed that I was kind of. Um, approached back my, my dad he was like oh like why don't you 
look at graphic design. Like I, I, he knew I loved drawing and I loved that aspect of it. That's why I kind of wanted to first pursue architecture. Right. And so I, I looked into graphic design and then talking with more of like my art teachers, getting my portfolio ready. Like that was like a huge process as well. Like I, I didn't like they, they had graphic design classes in high school, but I had really like no idea <laughs> at all. Oh man! Like, it, was, it was it was more of like uh, just like those like usual like drawing like painting mm-hmm. and just like getting more involved like going from like art one art two art three right, just being right. more, more progressive and you kind of also realize too as you're in these classes like hey I'm pretty good at this you know like I was always like make like some like drawings for my friends as well and. Uh, like just having that background of just loving that and just not really thinking about making it a career at all, you know, right. just really enjoying it. And so like since I was, wasn't going to go for architecture, just developing my portfolio. Um, I had to like apply to all these different colleges as well and get into their art program while also not having any graphic design work at all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was, it was kind of a, like, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. I just knew that I kind of wanted to pursue something in art. Mm-hmm. And even before that, I was also given the CS five suite from one of my neighbors. He's a photographer and he, he knew like, all right, like I wanted to try and pursue it. So he hooked me up with that program and I kind of had to learn a little bit on my own as well which is a little like nerve wracking because you could do so much. Yeah. <laughs> like no, no one had to work the programs now. You could do so much and it's a little overwhelming because you're just given this, this almost like you're like your Bible. <laughs> right. like, it's, it's, I have it's no truth. idea what I'm doing <laughs> at all. And that was also another like struggle going to college. I, like I finally got accepted to uh, TCNJ okay. with my portfolio and I really had no idea. Like, I had a little bit of an idea, like, okay, like, you make, like, flyers or you make, like, a logo. But I didn't really had no idea, like, how to go about that creative process or even how to use the pro to my best ability. And that was kind of more of, like, a struggle as well because I'm almost teaching myself. Mm. Almost. So going up to my other classmates, making friends with them, being like, hey, can you teach me how to do <laughs> 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 and because they, they didn't really like teach much of like how to use the programs it right. was more of like like the idea process and the conceptual part and um just seeing how, how you react in like different situations mm. but then eventually like once i started like working at that and going through like the, the different books and just kind of trial and error you know and Thanks. develop like developing it that way i kind of got almost like lost in it like i was like drawing or painting like i, I just wanted to accomplish that Thanks. you know i wanted to accomplish that goal of like all right like i actually really like this stuff and it's just like another form of drawing or painting or creating and mm-hmm. it was just like the whole creative process and falling in love with it that way um, that's cool man that's cool but I mean, that, that's kind of like how that creative journey started. Uh, I know it was like a long, long journey. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's, it still is a journey. I'm um, still doing different things every day, which is awesome. That's cool, man. It, it's funny you said that because I actually went to the point of actually starting to go to school in if in architecture. Really? Like, I, I was I was going to school for architecture. Uh, I was studying building design, and like while I'm doing that. I caught wind like I didn't even know graphic design like you know it exists but you just don't know it exists you, you if you know what I mean it. yeah it's just yeah. like and, it's and just I something caught that's there wind every yeah. day yeah and, it, and I caught wind of it and it completely distracted me from architecture I was like it, I couldn't I was like I don't want to do architecture anymore <laughs> I want to do this yeah completely because you know I, like you, you for me and I'm probably you probably went through the same thing it's just like when you, all right, you're a creative, you know how to draw, but you were like, okay, what's a real job with someone who knows how to draw? And just naturally, architecture was what that came to my mind. Yeah, that, 
that's exactly what I thought too. I was like, all right, like John, like I was like searching like different things and like this, this is what I like to do the most. You know, I'm not like the best at math at all or or writing, um, but I love doing this and it kind of seemed like the most probable thing. You don't really <laughs> see yourself like a, a crazy conceptual artist, you know? Yeah. That's like, true. Really, I think of making a crew. Like, I'm not knocking anyone who is, because I know like some artists out there like who are doing that, but it just like wasn't like my mindset at the time. And then yeah. it wasn't so like, I started like going through. It, I was like, wow, I, just, like, I really mess with this, you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. All right. So you're in college. You're grinding it out, learning the system, learning just um, how to become a graphic designer. You you get out of college, like, what was the next step after you got out of college? Like, you drop in your dream job? No. Uh, <laughs> not at all. So, I was also, like, very, um, like, appreciative to have this, like, other opportunity as well. Like, in college, I ha- had, like, an internship at a, a marketing firm. And Sweet. that was awesome. You know, just getting more used to, like, that office life. Mm-hmm. But then, after college... I was working in a, a printing company, so Sweet. I was I was still in the same field, but was doing pretty much nothing with graph design at all. Like I was like still like freelancing on the side, but this was a, a pre press specialist position. Mm. So I was looking at everything coming in, setting up every like artwork for a print, spec sizes, making sure they had their bleeds. Uh, if they needed a dye line or things like that. And it was very, very minimal graph design work. Like, I was still working the programs, but I did not land my dream job right out of college at all. Um, I, w- I was working there for maybe about a year. Sweet. And then and then my dream job opened up. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so you were at the print shop, like, fixing all the, the, the designs that graphic designers yeah, like, send over that like is not you, ready for print at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when... Exactly. Like, hey, like you, you need to put bleeds on this. Like, your resolution's bad. I mean, it kind of prepared me to be honest, like, be on that end process to know what to expect. Working right. with, the, like, different materials, different processes. I mean, it was a like, great learning experience. I don't, like, knock it at all. Sweet. Um, yeah, because you'd be surprised. Like, even until this day, a lot of designers don't even know like what it like a good print ready file is or what it looks like. Yeah, like like some people too. Like you know where you could like kind of check off um, like all like print register marks and all that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't really need that, or like, at least I haven't had the experience of where you really needed that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, just make sure you have your bleeds and then right. they'll, right. they'll right. resolution. Like the, <laughs> yeah, they'll put the dots in there for you and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, yeah. Print. <laughs> All right, so you land in your dream job, which was I can guess <laughs> where I'm at right now. Your chest. Sweet. Yes. <laughs> Sweet. How did that come about? How did the um, connection come? How did all of that come about? It's kind of funny too because like a lot of my jobs I've gotten were through meeting people and mm-hmm. um it was actually someone from my fraternity who was working there he he i think landed his dream job right away he was an intern for the jets and then worked his way up through a customer service and now he's in analytics Sweet. um yeah so he's been like he was like really moved around moved up um did really well but so he was working there and i remember hanging out with him one time like just joking around i was like because i think they were like thinking about having a new logo as well and maybe like just like a year before i was like still in school i was like joking around saying like oh yeah let me like design a logo I'll, and you could like send it to your boss and then get me a job right at school <laughs> just joking around <laughs> but then maybe a year goes by and he let me know that the position opened up for a designer and i was like i want it i like <laughs> <laughs> you know and so kind of he also kind of helped me prepare as well because i was like i want to really have something ready in my portfolio that is jets designed like, i had a poster i showed it to him he was like this is sick 
but then he's told me like hey maybe you could put um like matt forte he was just uh signed to the, the jets at that time too mm, right, and right, right. he's like how about you put him in a jersey i was like don't and so i think that was like another like wow factor for them like in my like portfolio as well like okay like you can design for us you like, you show us like what you got and i think that's maybe like what also helped me as well but um he helped me get the interview and and then it was just like after that it was kind of just like taking the wheel and <laughs> figuring out from there but it was sweet yeah definitely right place right time you know <laughs> two things two things i've learned and like in just this whole journey is that one you got to do your best to be able to do good work mm-hmm. but you also got to be building relationships at the same time yeah i definitely because because like you could have the good work but not without no quality relationships you won't even get your foot in the door Mm-hmm. And you could have the relationships, but have no good work. You'll get your foot in the door, but you'll get turned around because you're working. Yeah, you, won't, you won't last. <laughs> <laughs> really won't last. <laughs> so, I mean, those are two things that I've really noticed. Like, just keep doing good work and build quality relationships. What do you think about that? I mean, I agree that to the full extent. Like, you have to have both sides you know um like you said like keep like creating quality work but then like there's a lot of people out there who are probably better at what they do than me and you Mm -hmm. and they're just unnoticed like they probably are they might be like the best ball handler in basketball still just like unnoticed because they're just like either not going for it not applying themselves or um don't have that like right connection to put them in the right face of the right people that's um, true but i definitely agree like even like building those relationships as well and keeping those relationships like like not to sound like a terrible person but or just like oh like just to check up on them just because um you want to get something like from to, it. like to, to like yeah to get that something from it but you just want to like just be a good person like just like every now and Facts. then like you know Facts. I think it, that goes a long way. Yeah, man. I mean, I can tell you, like, it's done wonders for me. I can't even lie. The relationships and not just the opportunities it brings, but that's why I say build quality relationships, but that people that could feed in your life in a good way. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, yeah, you got to keep the good people around and kind of get rid of the bad people, so to speak. Facts. Facts, facts. All right. So what? So what was like the coolest moment being at the Jets? Coolest experience? Uh, I think I have like two. So let's do it. Like the the first one is when I first started. Like that was more of my first start of a craft design job. Just unforgettable feeling when I got that call. Like, hey we want to offer you this job i was i wanted to scream you know um <laughs> but i, I could imagine having, man. <laughs> having my first actual project with them was also big too because that was training camp and it was kind of mm. sink or swim at that point like mm. show up <laughs> um and that's just something that like, i'll never forget as well because after like going through it you're doing all these different, uh, I guess, like uh, print files for different signage. You have to do um, like web promotion as well. And you're not really thinking about that at all, like doing like web and print and also um, like different like social stuff as well. Facts. But just and then getting the kind of like that praise afterwards, like, hey, like you really like did a great really job. I'll just like, yeah, I'll never forget that. And then also this, this new brand launch. Oh yeah. So with the, with the new jerseys, I feel like it hasn't, like it, it's hit me a little bit that it actually happened. And I was part of something so big, but I feel like I still need maybe some years down the line that were <laughs> actually hit me. Like, like you were, you were a part of this, <laughs> you know? 
And that's just, that's something I'll, I'll probably never forget as well. Just being part of that, being part of that process. Um, like you have everything right in front of you and still no one else knows about it. Mm. You know, you're preparing mm. to just drop that bomb and everyone to go mm. wild. Mm. You know, that's something that's probably unforgettable as well. That's facts. Yeah. I mean, the the new rollout was pretty epic. Like, just as a fan of, on the outside, looking with the designer's eye, like it it was pretty legit. That black, that black, that black, all that, that all black. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <sighs> it's it's so it's it's a lot different. It's the the black to our color palette. I feel like adds so much. You know. Adds a lot of depth. Um, Facts. It's just it's just so different because it was like just strictly green, white, maybe a little like, a bit of gray. It used to be, mm-hmm. um, but the black definitely just a nice touch. <laughs> sweet, sweet. All right. So, what would you say was the hardest struggle that you had to overcome through your journey? Um, I think, like I said before, more of trying to learn the programs. Hmm. of like trying to apply my 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 mind from like my drawing mind or like painting mind just like creative process into the programs of like photoshop illustrator things like that just like hmm. that learning curve of kind of, kind of as everyone else is up here hmm. and i was down here because they've already have experience doing everything graph design related and I'm nice. kind of jumping into it, just learning, kind of just getting my that little bug in me, you know. But I think that was more of a more of a struggle of anything through the, through that journey. I hear you. I hear you. All right. So, who is the people that Michael kind of surrounds himself on, always cheering you on? Who are those people in your life? I would definitely say my my family and friends, without mm-hmm. a doubt. Um, like my parents always tell me that they're proud of me and that definitely helps as well you know definitely shed some light on those like darker days (laughs) um but my friends as well because they're they're also they're like developing their careers and they want like they're cheering you on want to see you win you want to see them win and Mm -hmm. we just want to live in a mansion together you know (laughs) i feel you i feel you man It, 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 it it's pretty cool when you have those type of friends that like actually want to see you do well like when like they're they feel it when you're down and they actually want to see you like do extremely well it's awesome to have those type of friends yeah i have a lot of inspiring friends um like they're all doing their own things as well um like one of my buddies in law school my other buddy um is also starting a couple like a couple businesses as well and Mm -hmm. like seeing that being like more of like an entrepreneur as well kind of inspires you to like build those relationships and also like work hard you know facts that's true that's true that's true i love it man i love that whole deal because i got like a couple groups of friends and you know i mean it's just kind of cool to have those people that you can kind of just share what you got going on when you get like a big win like land a job like the jets you know what I mean? You can share that and yeah, they make that's the you first people I'm more <laughs> excited. You, you know what I mean? They they make you more excited than what you actually were. They actually yeah. make it like, okay, like this is really a big deal. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's definitely All good right. to surround yourself with those types of people. That's true. That's true. That's true. All right. So let's jump into some um, questions. What's that thing that Michael can't live without that's not his phone? Hmm. To be honest, it's not really almost a, like a product, but I wouldn't be able to live if I were to not be allowed to go outside at all. Mm. You know, I, You're outdoors, I love man, the huh? outdoors. Yeah, yeah. I, I love everything about it. I need to go outside. I mean, not just to get to where I need to go, <laughs> but um, I just love being outside at least a couple of times a day. Just I dig it. I, I just can't be in, in walls at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love it, man. It's it's always cool to kind of just get outside 
and just you know what I mean just breathe it in just breathe it in like yeah I'm with you on that I dig that yeah. <clears throat> alright so I, if I actually pick a thing maybe sure. a stove <laughs> a I stove <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm always I'm always eating. If you never see me with like food at all, then something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> a stove, man. I've 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 gotten a warm blanket. I've I've gotten so many. I've never got a stove though. I'll take that. That's what's up. A stove. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's jump. Um, what is like the first hour? You could. You could do like the first hour of your day, first hour when you get into work. What's the first hour of your day like? First hour, probably be just like waking up out of bed, uh, put some music on, just like kind of like start getting ready. Um, I mm. love music. Um, and then to get ready, sitting in about like an hour's worth of traffic, <laughs> going to work. <laughs> Where where and is then, the where is the, the the Jets facility at? It's in uh, Florham Park. Florham Park, right? Florham Park. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and usually I'll have breakfast. Just like a kind of like a more of a slow start. Mm-hmm. Just get, not really think about anything. Just kind of wake up, listen, like eat, get some coffee, and then. Put, put my headphones in and just start going to work. Um, I, I, feel you. I, I think if I didn't have like my, my headphones at all, like the days I do forget my headphones at work are definitely the most like long days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I oh, man, I'm with you on that. Like at, at my at my my at my job, they actually have like headphones at like everyone's desk. So, like, if I ever forget wow. my headphones, like, everyone gets headphones. So I feel like that's a lifesaver because I've, for- I've forgotten my headphones a few times. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've also been, like, more zoned into my work where I've had my headphones in, but I forgot to press play. They're not even <laughs> on, bro. It's just like this. this, this I don't... I'm, I'm so with you. They're not even on, but they just kind of put everything in place. You put it on, forget to hit play, but yeah. you're in the zone. Yeah, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy after all. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one either. Just, like, I really did not press play for the last hour. <laughs> oh gosh, that's crazy. All right, uh, book recommendations. Honestly, I'm not too big on like reading at all. I'm trying to get more into it. Uh, I just finished Shoe Dog. Oh. The, the book by Nike, and mm-hmm. then also um, still working on the Alchemist. Sweet, those are yeah. some some pretty good books you're rolling with right now. How was you, Doug? It was good. I mean, it was a little long, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's a read. It's <laughs> stories, you know? Yeah, that's that's what's uh, up, man. Those are those are some good set of books right there. Yeah, uh, like what books are you reading right now? That well, well, I let me see. The last book I read was this book called Profit First. Hmm. So what, it was more on. It, it was more on like if you have a business, like how to set up like different different buckets of finance of your finance. Mm-hmm. So when the money comes in, instead of like paying the bills first, when the money comes in you put the profit away first and start and set up everything else and the idea is to kind of set up automatic deductions that before you even dive into money that money is already put aside and it's before you even start diving into the money as soon as it comes in so it, it's pretty interesting mm-hmm. man it's pretty interesting and and to be honest i've i've done some of the practices and i even forget sometimes that the money is coming out and when I look into the account that it's going into, I'm like, oh, now I see why I do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it's a pretty cool book. That's that's one of the books that I, I've, I've the, la- the last book I've, I've read. So I'm um, called Profit First. So check it out, man. So it's a cool book. Yeah, it's I'll not a hard it read. It's not a hard read at all. Yeah. There was one book. I don't know if you heard of it. My friend always talks about it. Um, the I think it's the Seven Spiritual Laws of Success or something like that. I think I've heard of it, but um, 
Never read it, but I think I've heard of it. I think it's like a short book too, but okay, I mean that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, put that one, look that up, and put it in the show notes for sure, for sure. All right. So, <clears throat> what what is next for Michael? What you got? What what's next? What's the next moves for Michael? Um, honestly, I think learn more motion stuff. Mm. Um, I've already tapped into that as well. Mm-hmm. Just teaching myself as well. Uh, being at the Jets, I've also said like I wanted to do that and Mm -hmm. um we're kind of teaching ourselves as well but also just want to actually sit down and really like dive into it more and more um almost maybe even like transition to more that motion side i think there's Mm -hmm. just so much you could do with it and just it just opens up for everything yeah i'm with you once you make it look good once you make it look good like still yeah now you want to make it move (laughs) yeah it's it's nuts. I mean, I, I've seen some stuff like on like the sports end as well. Yeah, even working with three D things and like Premiere and just adding video. There's just yeah. so much you could do. So I, I yeah, think that's I, I, more on that. What's next or what's in the upcoming steps? I know a couple of dudes that are following. They're like they were in the still, like just creating still stuff, and then eventually one of them like he's he's been practicing motion and like he's on another level now he's on another level but i like that though because i'm always trying to add something else to my skill 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 set a few months ago i was like i haven't been using i haven't really used xd like that and Mm -hmm. i've been like diving in that thing like crazy building so now i've built like a few web 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 stuff with um xd I haven't really messed around, but now I feel like, man, I've used it a lot in the last few months. Yeah, I, I've used it a little bit just to uh, wireframe. Yeah. And that, but never to really kind of push out uh, like a full website like that. Do you do a lot of yeah. web, web design or no? Well, the last few months, yeah, I've been like really doing a few few websites. You know what I mean? At the job, I've mm-hmm. been doing a ton. They, they've really like, like, it's kind of crazy like i wasn't really using xd like if you talked to me like six months ago i wasn't even really using it now like oh, wow. <laughs> i'm using oh. it like uh, <laughs> at least at least four hours at least four hours a day i'm using xd right that's good i have yeah, so it, it, and it's now that i look back it's like cool now i have I, i've legit add this to my skill set which is great because mm-hmm. it's like between it and figma they're like constantly growing Definitely, well dude definitely i mean good to just... no go ahead no it's definitely good to just keep like working at things learning different things that you never know really what can open up for you yeah you know? that's true i mean i'm i'm with you like i'm with you like even with doing this podcast like um like i don't really edit it anymore but like before i got someone to edit it for me like i've learned so much through this when it comes to the audio um, just a f- just doing a full on production, just producing alone in in itself, mm-hmm. like, it's helped me. I learned like basically how to produce a show, and it's been pretty awesome to learn just the ins and outs and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure you learn as as you go to just different things you could do better and yeah, how to improve on it as well. Definitely, I'm still 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 learning. I'm never gonna stop, when, especially when it comes to something like this, because I. Now that I've seen like it's 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 a serious thing and you know, I really gotta grow it and just learn. Just learn and you know, learn and try to teach the people that is helping me grow it. So it's it's been pretty cool. So what advice would you have for any creatives out there? Um just keep creating. Um I, I was very actually inspired and you actually interviewed this person too. Um, Amy Hood. That's my homie right now. Um, so I, I saw her speak at this conference called MLC Connect. It mm-hmm. was for a bunch of uh, creatives that were in the sports industry, and a bunch of people spoke, and a lot of them were saying just keep creating. They were almost like just keep creating random things, have your own personal projects. And that really took a like 
a toll on me because I've always been inspired to just create things as well, but just never really did it. And then, like recently, I, I uh, went to California and I made these logo badges for the different areas that I was in. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not getting paid for that at all, or like do it. Like in that sense, I just did it because I wanted to do. It. I wanted to envision my like the area that I was in, just in this in this logo badge. I mean, I'll probably still like create for the different places I've also been to as well. But that was like the most recent, and. <laughs> I just had to say, just like keep creating. You never know where you're going to get inspired by something else that you're doing. Um, like even like those logo badges don't really translate to what we're doing at the Jets, like in that sports field. But something like that could come up and inspire you right. to do something else. So that's why I say just like keep creating, keep finding out. I guess what you like about design and find your your niche i'm still like trying to figure it out as well but i think that also helps you develop that just keep creating different things and just broaden your spectrum on everything yeah i'm with you on that yeah perfect personal projects if anything anyone who's listening personal projects is key man yeah i mean you're you're your own you're your own boss too (laughs) because like you you know like you don't have to listen to anyone else you know that's right. it's it's good to kind of step back and you be that person in charge and mm-hmm. realize like hey like this looks good this doesn't and just do what you want i think it's Thanks. a good little like way of like form of like expression like expressing what you want to do yeah uh, if if man you you hit it on the head like if i could tell anyone to do anything whatever that personal project whatever that thing is that you've been putting off thinking about like go do that personal project this past this podcast is a personal project like I've, and i'm always doing personal projects some i share some i don't but like you hit it the nail on the head man always like do personal projects people yeah, I mean, it also brings me back to it too of just getting lost in something that you love doing. Yeah, it's Facts. fun. It's so much yep. fun. Like I could, yep. I could do this for hours. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um. Like, you, like when I was like creating those badges too. I I think I had I had work the next morning. I think, and I was up till maybe <laughs> like three a.m. I was I was just going. <laughs> I, I created four of them in one night. <laughs> Uh, that's that's what's up man and that's what happens that's when you know you're in a good spot and it's something that you know when time doesn't matter it it doesn't feel like work it just the whole excitement of doing the thing is what's driving you that's when you know like okay i may may have sparked something right there so i i I, I like that i like that a lot all right man so as we're getting ready to uh, to close, like, where can people go to find you and learn more about what you're doing? Um, they go to my website. It's michaelbarondesign.com. And then also you can follow me on social media. It's uh, Mike underscore Baron. Sweet. Um, Instagram. Not, not on Twitter. Maybe I should start that up, but... <laughs> Sweet, sweet, sweet. Dude, this has been amazing. Really glad to get you on. I really, I'm, I'm glad you uh, accepted the request. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, uh, I, like, I want people to know more, you know, um, and just hopefully maybe this inspires someone else as well to like work on their own projects and get to where they want to go. Sweet. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. I hope it's been super valuable to you. And you're now ready to take your audience building, your community growing to the next level to help you and help me build our empire, for lack of a better word, or just to build our thing. Um, Remember to stop by iTunes, Passion Behind the Art, and leave a review and subscribe. It's very important to me. It helps the podcast grow. And it makes me feel good to kind of hear from you guys to know what you like about this podcast what it's done for you so jump on itunes and subscribe and leave a review
passion behind the art. Be blessed.